Welcome to today's episode and Happy New Year to you. Um, I'm already a bit into January, so um, it may be a little late to do this, but maybe better late than never. This is a little roundup of um, the knitting that I made in 2023. And it freaks me out a little when I when I do this overview because, um, well, I'm afraid that it's going to look <laughs> maybe a little unrealistic to people who have very demanding full-time jobs. So just know that this is what I knitted in one random year. I have a little suspicion that I'm not going to be quite as productive this year. And that's also completely fine. Sometimes when I take it upon me to begin something new, and this time round of my knitting journey, I've only been knitting a little over two years. I, I just sort of, I, I'm all in. I knit away or whatever it is that I throw myself into. And then it sort of finds its its um, the level it's meant to be at. Um, also, simply, I'm running out of closet space. So uh, I have to think about some things. And I'm going to do that as I show you some of the knits that... Um, that I've made in 2023. But first, um, just wanted to mention a couple of things. Of course, there's a quote. And also, I just wanted to um, address a couple of things that are going on in Denmark right now. One thing is the weather. Maybe by the time you see this, um, the snow will have melted again. Last time, there was a lot of snow in, um, in my background. The following week, it had all melted again. Then a few days ago, we had crazy weather in Denmark. Schools were closed here and there. Um, trains were um, suspended and um, it's just been really strange. It's been very cold and currently right now there's snow outside my window. And the only reason why I'm not sitting in the exact same position as last time is that I simply have better light sitting like this. Um, I don't have to use artificial light and it's always so difficult to place those artificial lights that I simply chose to just move the camera around a little. I might show you a few clips from outside, including a little hobby I've developed lately, which um, is very cold. The other thing is that as every Dane by now knows and has thought about and probably talked about is that our queen, Queen Margaret II, in her New Year's speech on December 31st, announced that she's stepping down. She's abdicating, leaving her throne to the Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary from Australia. So it's it's been something that everybody's been talking about ever since. And um, on Sunday, the 14th of January, she's officially going to abdicate and he's officially going to be crowned king and Mary's going to be crowned queen. So um, this is a kind of a big deal, even though monarchs no longer have any power. It's still, you know, she's been a figurehead in Denmark for many years, for 52 years to be exact, on January 14th. So it's pretty big. And I think a lot of Australians are finding it also exciting that we're now going to have a queen who uh, comes from Australia, Tasmania to be exact. So, so this is all very um, exciting and something that, you know, is taking up space in our culture these days. And that's completely unrelated to obviously what I'm gonna talk about now. Just wanted to uh, say that this is sort of the um, the way things are right now in Denmark. The quote that I've decided to um, mention today is, uh, well, it's a continuation of the talk we had last time. I say we. Um, I broached it and a couple of you have sort of um, written back and forth. Somebody wrote to say that it was about the whole idea of perfectionism. Somebody wrote to say that uh, there's nothing wrong with striving for, um, I forget the word, but you know, high standards. And I agree. Um, it's not as if we shouldn't strive for or, or do our best to make, uh, in this case, a beautiful garment or whatever it may be. Um, but there's a subtle difference. So the quote is by a man I don't actually know. His name is Michael Law. And he said this, at its root, perfectionism isn't really about a deep love of being meticulous. It's about fear, fear of making a mistake, fear of disappointing others, fear of failure, fear of success. And I thought that was interesting because I'd already concluded 
after I thought about this that I think um, I've concluded anyway that perfectionism is sort of the opposite of creativity um, and I've certainly experienced that several times in my life if I was very afraid of doing a good job it sort of hampered my creativity if you're more set free you can still strive for doing a really good job but it should be for for love of doing a good job because you love whatever it is you're doing not because you're afraid of um, the result so yeah that's just a little note to self note to all of us to um, maybe feel you know are we doing this for the love of it or are we afraid of doing something and I think you can always tell the difference you can tell whether something is from a state of love or a state of fear and can I just also add that it's not as if I have this uh, all figured out it's kind of a moment to moment um, journey I guess uh, trying to uh, do things from a place of love and not fear and every time we do find fear in ourselves to try to overcome that I'm gonna I'm gonna stop <laughs> talking about that because that can easily turn into a long discussion um, and get on to the sweaters that are lying in uh, piles around me here and I had a bit of a job to <laughs> to place them here and as I said it's an overview if you've seen my previous videos you will have already seen where I talk about these uh, when they were finished and I talk about all the details the journey etc so I'm not gonna go into all those details here I'm gonna mainly focus on um, a review part of it I guess you could call it how things are in relation to this garment now how much wear am I getting out of it and uh, things I remember um, so the first the first sweater I knitted this year was the Abba sweater by Aegyo Knit in uh, Puralana and Kitsita from Gepardgan a Danish yarn company and um, it's this charcoal gray as a main color and contrast color if you can even call it that two colors at any rate is this grayish rose dusty rose um, and I have worn this a lot I love this it's uh, an amazing fit it's like the perfect um, garment for me I think because it's uh, it's cozy it's got big sleeves it's long ish um, it's got kind of a funnel neck it's got colors that I enjoy it's um, it's at the same time I think pretty cool <laughs> it's a lovely design and the yarn is soft the Kitsita is not entirely soft uh, on my neck but the funnel neck here gives me room enough so that it doesn't sit, sit up tight against uh, my skin um, and sometimes I do wear a little scarf underneath so that's okay I've worn this a lot in terms of needle sizes and things like that it's all on my Ravelry but this was a relatively big needle maybe size 6 millimeter I think or something like that and um, that helped it move relatively fast also um, this sort of chevron color work pattern was um, relatively intuitive uh, it I have to say the yarn was um, a pleasure to work with for this kind of pattern because I didn't have to work to sort of stretch or bunch together the floats or anything like that it just it was yeah it was a pleasure to work with I love the colors and I can definitely recommend this pattern and right now I've got a cat eyeing me through a window so I'm gonna have to let him in so hold that thought okay so the cat's inside and until he starts meowing that he wants to go back outside I'm gonna I'm gonna stay put I hope maybe you should add that the upper sweater is pretty warm so it's definitely for weather like today and in opposition to that we have the next sweater which is um, pink velvet by Andre Maori and I knitted mine in Qing fiber I think the pink here is called Veronita and this one is a superwash merino and they're both super soft and this is why I've actually even though this is a very sort of um, mm, not necessarily an everyday knit for me at any rate I've actually worn it a lot I've worn it to um, 
things where I want it to look a little more festive. I worn it out and I've worn it uh, either with a long sleeve t-shirt underneath or with a white shirt underneath. Um, probably because it's been relatively cold, not super cold uh, when I've worn it, but it's been fall and winter. I imagine maybe sometime in the spring, I'm going to use it with just a tank top or something underneath. And that has been the, the real pleasure of this. Um, it was fun to knit. It was easy to knit. It's knitted in the round and um, it's got some short rows on the back. I absolutely love these colors. I have gotten a lot of compliments on this one. I've worn it and um, I love how the pink is just sort of up here and offset by this dove gray blue color. Um, the only thing I'm not loving so much is that the sleeves are quite tight, partly because I don't have thin arms, but partly also I think because I didn't go up half a needle size. I don't actually usually, but I think also Andrea Maori's patterns have pretty slim sleeves typically. Uh, so I know that for, for next time, but um, I've actually worn this quite a lot. And um, already now I can tell you that one of the criteria why I use certain garments more than others is the softness. Because as I've waxed on about on this channel or in these knitting podcasts at any rate, is that I have sensitive skin. So if something doesn't feel soft, if it's too prickly, no matter how beautiful it is, I'm just not going to wear it. Especially if you have uh, 15 other sweaters to choose from. So. So there you go. So this is um, this has definitely been worn. The next sweater is the Sarang sweater by Aegonit as well, which is this um, beautiful, beautiful garment, beautiful sweater um, with an intricate uh, pattern, a mixture of cables and lace, and then these little toggles. Is that what they're called? Um, on the sleeves. This is knitted in Biche et Buche, um, Le Petit Silk Mohair and what was it called? Le Cashmere et Lambswool. <laughs> in very light pink and nude pink. And this was knitted on a four millimeter needle. So it, it took a long time. I'm not going to lie. It took a long time, but I... I really loved knitting on it because it's a beautiful uh, piece. I think it's got these little um, welts and I love the combination of cables and lace. I haven't seen that very often. And I love the fact that the shoulder is sort of, you know, on the back, you can see that this is where it began. I haven't worn this all that much. One reason being that it's, it's very oversized. I like oversized. Um, but there's a there's kind of a, a sweet spot where something becomes maybe, you know, it tips over into maybe a little too oversized. But I think I should also just, um, you know, take it out and wear it. I think it's because it's maybe a slightly scratch up here. Of course, I could get around that by wearing a scarf, which I often do anyway, like a small silk scarf. Um, but I think I'm also telling myself or subconsciously, um, maybe not reaching forward so much because it's a little statement like statement looking it's um very thick and very warm so it's not something that as opposed to the pink velvet i can wear much inside um whereas the other sweater which is perhaps the same thickness is a little more i wouldn't say basic but more wearable perhaps easier to style and yet even as i'm saying this i think well no just just grab it um see what happens you know um i think we tend to get into habits at least i know i do and um things that don't demand something of me you know i don't have to style it with so certain um pants or something very elaborate in order to wear it those are the things i tend to reach for but i have to get better at uh, wearing the sarang because it's absolutely beautiful and i love the I love the color and I love the, I love the design. If I were to make it again today, I would probably make fewer increases under the arms. Apropos that, the next sweater that I made, I'm doing this in chronological order, by the way, because it's just the easiest. 
Um, the next sweater I made is the Bowie sweater, also by Aegonit. And this I've worn a lot. This has been knitted in uh, Puno by Gepardgan. And you can see it's reverse stockinette. So it was knitted on the, uh, on the other side and then just turned around. Easy to knit, although the, the pattern wasn't the easiest to follow. Perhaps I've had quite a few questions um, for this particular pattern. And that reminds me, I have to say, some, I want to say that uh, thank you so much for when you write all sorts of comments to me. I have decided I have to say um, um, I, can't, I can't help you out so much with knitting questions because I'm getting more and more of those. And strictly speaking, it's the designer's job to help you out. I completely understand that it's frustrating if they don't answer. But for one thing, it is their job. The support comes with a pattern once you've paid for that. But also, I've often forgotten. Not everything, but I've, I, you know, once I've knitted a pattern, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's out of my brain, and I move on to the next thing. It's just I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, I tend to do that. Certain things I will remember, uh, but apart from that, mm, probably, probably not. But. Um, at any rate, this is a very sort of a, it's oversized. I made it a little smaller than what the pattern said because I'd already knitted one. Oh yeah, I guess that's, no, I think I knitted that at the end of last year. I knitted one for Caroline or Kaoline of Aegean Knit in the required yarn, Issa Tweed and Silk Mohair. And um, that was a little bigger, even though it's the same size as this. And also the yarn was a little scratchy. So I knew I wanted to knit one for myself and I chose Puno because it's softer. And then I made it a little narrower and it's exactly the size I want. It's still <laughs> very wide, as you can see, but there's a there's a drape to this yarn. That means, yeah, it just falls perfectly. And I love, this is Puno Upcycled, Hygge wie Peisen, I believe it's called, Hygge by the Fireplace. And it's, um, yeah, it's, I really love this color and I love the fit. It's uh, a perfect sweater. It's basic. It doesn't require, it's basic, but different. It doesn't require that I style it in a particular way. I don't feel, and it's a color that goes with most things. It's this sort of a uh, cool grayish beige. And I, I just, I love this so much. It's one of the sweaters that I wear the most. And I've also gotten quite a lot of compliments on it. It's, it's, um, pretty cool I think and it's also cozy and I think I can definitely feel I gravitate to sweaters that that give me that vibe so yeah I think the pattern has been updated now so if anybody's interested to, uh, in knitting it there should be I hope clearer instructions and if not don't be afraid to ask Caroline so let me say also that of course you will be seeing if you haven't already noticed that I've knitted quite a lot of Aegean Knits patterns this year. And one reason is that I was fortunate enough to get the opportunity to test knit, excuse me, partly because Kaolina, Caroline, lives around the corner from me practically, seven kilometers away. So it's been easy for me to drive out to her place or to, for her to come here to, to discuss things uh, uh, with the patterns and the yarn. Also because, and that's another reason, I've translated um, a lot of her patterns and it makes it so much easier to translate when I've already knitted the pattern myself because uh, every now and then I add something to the English translation where I think somebody might like a little more information. Or if there's uh, anything that could be misunderstood or is perhaps a little ambivalent, I remember what I did. So I tend to... Um, I tend to sometimes translate at the same time that I'm, uh, or shortly after I've knitted it, and that that helps. So there are more of Aegonitz patterns in this uh, pile <laughs> uh, than perhaps normal, um, and I, I suspect I'll continue to knit um, several of her patterns. But I would also like to branch out. I've also, um, which I already have this year. I think in addition to uh, knitting. Uh, 
garments that I like, garments that are wearable. I would also like to learn new things, uh, try different yarns, try different uh, designers. And I've certainly also done that to some extent. Uh, and every time I've tried something, I'm like, oh, that's nice. I'd now, now I'd like to try others or other yarns, other techniques, other designers. So, so even though you think now I have all these sweaters, there's always something new to learn, somebody new to um, explore. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons why I like this so much. Moving on to the next item. It is the Sion Kimono by Agonit. Whoops, it's a little wrinkled from lying. Yeah, this is a little tricky to store because it gets a little wrinkled. Um, but this is knitted in, hold on, let me check my notes. This is knitted in Isa Trio 1 in the color powder and Silk Mohair in the color 6. So um, it's a really drapey, I wouldn't say romantic because Caroline doesn't make romantic patterns, but there's something, hmm, um, I don't know. There, it's a, it's got an element of fantasy, and I love that. You know, there's a, it's not your everyday to the office cardigan, but it still has the same function as a cardigan. At least it has had for me. I've worn it quite a few times. I've worn it around the house as, I guess you could call it loungewear, and I've worn it uh, to a Christmas party over something black, and everybody oohed and odd over it. I think. Some people have found it difficult to knit. Um, I can only say do what the pattern says. I wasn't very far into my knitting journey when I knitted this. And uh, I think you, you have to be patient, do what it says. Carolina has told me that she's sometimes seen, not only in this, but in some of her other patterns, that if the pattern tells you to turn something inside out, she's sometimes seen people not do that because they were perhaps used to something else. Well, just, you know, if you follow along, I think you'll be okay. So anyway, I've gotten a lot of use out of this and um, I think it's beautiful. And this was one of the um, garments that confirmed to me that I need more cardigans in my life. It's made with Trio One, which is a light, yarn from Isaiah and then one strand of silk mohair so it's not all that thick which is also very useful somebody whose uh, body temperature has risen over the past few years and um, it's kind of a transition knits so that's definitely where I would like to make more garments things that can be worn easily taken off but also worn when the temperatures are sort of in between cold and warm all right, so that was the Sion Kimono. And I made that, I guess, when did I make that? I made that um, in the month of May last year. And then it was beginning to get a little hot. So I started for the first time making summer garments. I made the Joni top in this um, German linen. And I didn't find it uh, harsh. I can feel that. Yeah, it's perhaps a little, you can, you know, sounds a little uh, papery, um, but it's quite uh, soft and it's drapey. I think somebody wrote to tell me that it's a good idea to wash it and give it a spin because it does tend to stretch. I already have um, noticed that it's become a little wider, so I might do that. Um, I wore it when I was in Greece. And it was pretty okay. But if it's very hot, I'm not sure I'm going to actually want to wear something knitted. Knit where to me feels hotter than, for instance, a cotton t-shirt uh, or, or a tank top or something. So mm, I have to be mindful of that. Uh, I also have to be mindful of white knitwear because... It does tend to sort of, if I'm wearing makeup or something, it does tend to easily be a little smudged here. Uh, so it's a little more delicate, but I really like this uh, pattern, the sort of um, vintage look of this. And, um, oh, I forgot to say, it's by Moonstruck Knits, Natasha Hornby. 
very well written pattern very detailed very sort of um, nice and easy overview so I am definitely going to knit more of her patterns more on that uh, in a future video so maybe I should just add that I'm not going to wear this when it's very hot and uh, since it's then something I'm going to wear when it's a little cooler I would like to knit I also mentioned that last year uh, some kind of summery cardigan to you know to cover my arms because it's uh yeah with uh, a little rise in body temperature these past few years it's sort of a it's always tricky to figure out you know when do I when do I wear something can I easily take it off it's a constant predicament the next thing that I knitted was um, another summer top and also it was the first time I knitted summer tops the previous summer I'd been completely uninterested in summer knitting I thought, well, knitting is for sweaters, right? Why knit summer tops? And then suddenly, <laughs> I'm all about the summer tops. Um, uh, they're faster, that's for sure, because you have no sleeves. However, uh, they're also on smaller needles, so it's not entirely fast. Um, this is the Ureum top by Ego Knit, and it's knitted using Isaiah Japanese cotton and two strands of Trio 1, I believe. So it's, it was a kind of a yeah, papery uh, yarn combo, but it softened up completely when I uh, washed and blocked it. And I wore this to, to several things because it has a detail here, but I found it very wearable. Um, so definitely a recommended summer pattern. If it's too hot, if it's too hot, I can't wear it because it sits relatively high up on my neck here. And I just, I can't have that if it's too hot. I have to have, you know, um, room to breathe as it were the next thing I knitted was the couture top by Sari Nordland in this uh, lovely ice blue um, barrette silk from Knitting for Olive which I mean I, I it's so strange that this is silk it there's it doesn't have a shine to it it's not that type of silk um, and also it's just super soft in terms of the pattern I definitely should not have made increases, but probably decreases. So this has to be worn for me, uh, probably tucked into something. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm the type of person that tucks stuff in, not knitwear. So I'll have to become the person who does that. Um, it, it was a pleasure to knit the lace. It was kind of a slog to knit the stuck in it I have to say because it was on teeny for me teeny tiny needles and it took a surprisingly long time on the other hand as, as I said there are no sleeves so I will definitely make um, summer garments again I think um, I'm looking forward to wearing this again this summer uh, the others as well of course and I also suspect I'd like to um, knit something using the knitting for olive barrette silk again because it was it's really soft and it's reasonable um so yeah and oh um it was the first time i knitted this uh, pattern by sari nordland and it was also a pleasure to knit um she's a she's a marvelous designer she makes so many beautiful things and um i definitely like to knit another of her patterns again Actually, I began one uh, in November, or was it October, having some sort of idea that I would be able to finish it before Christmas, which was very naive of me. Um, that's for another video, but I will definitely be knitting more of her patterns. And the last item in this pile is the Sook Moon sweater by Aegyo Knit, which was uh, a challenge to knit in the summer months, I have to say. But, oh my gosh, I love this. This is also one of those, um, it's cozy, but to me, stylish. I like that when something hits that sort of, both of those, stylish but cozy and wearable, um, I will wear it a lot. This is uh, Gepard Gun Wild and Soft, held with Gepard Gun Kid Sita. And it's a sort of boxy, drapey, slouchy, um, sweatshirty, but classy garment, I think. 
I remember knitting this on a larger knitting the not the garment but the the neck band where you begin it's top down and a raglan I remember knitting it on a bigger needle because than the pattern required because um, I discovered by then from the um, Oba sweater that I'm not too fond of the kitsita the my skin right here so I have to uh, sort of you know, if I wear something like this underneath, a long sleeve t-shirt, I have to make sure that it comes just a little below. Um, I do wear a silk scarf with this also sometimes, but I don't have to because I've made it slightly bigger and I, I appreciate that. Um, I've worn this quite a bit, usually with a lighter long sleeve t-shirt underneath so you can see the stripes. And it's also surprisingly warm, considering it's one strand of wild and soft, which is a mix of wool and silk, and then one strand of kitsita. Surprisingly warm. Um, but I love the fit of this. The only... Uh, I, don't, I don't have anything negative about it. The only negative thing I have is that my hairs can easily be identified when they fall all over the place. Or if I knit my hair into, I don't know if any of you people who are long haired have have tried that knitting your hair into the into the garment. My gosh, I've tried that several times. <laughs> the other tricky thing is that knitting using black yarn is a bit of a challenge. It was actually uh, better doing it in the summer months because when you're in the northern hemisphere, at least because I had more light. But of course, it was really hot to have in my lap. Somebody suggested putting a white piece of cloth underneath and that's a really good idea because then you you're better able to see your stitches and maybe also using knitting needles that unlike mine are lighter so you can see your stitches better okay i've just tried to rearrange the pile again hope that's going to work okay so the next sweater i knitted was the busan sweater by Ego Knit. And this is uh, a roomy basic sweater with a detail, uh, a giant cable on the front and a um, kind of a mock turtleneck. And this was the first time I knitted in a navy blue. And this is um, made using Woolia from Gipatgan and Kitsita. The pattern is I uh, used cashmere lace from Gipatgan as the other strand and this having now established that I'm a little uh, sensitive to their kitsita and since this is a mock turtleneck that's a little tighter than the one on Abba um, I I, um, I wanted to use something a little softer and I've worn this quite a lot um, it was easy to make um, I talked about this in, in a video previously um, where I mentioned some modifications and I think after that she made the smallest size a little smaller because I I felt mine was becoming very oversized um, and I think it's it looks really cool on some people especially if you're tall I'm not tall I'm not petite I'm just not tall uh, so it doesn't look good on my frame um, at least I don't feel that it does you know it's completely different from well, it depends on what you look like. Caroline is sort of my height, but she's more petite and it looks really good on her. So I suspect it's because of your shoulders, your the, the way your body looks. I don't know. If I were to make this again, I would probably make the sleeves a little longer. Um, it's one of the things I've realized also from some of the sweaters I made the previous year that I think sometimes if I stand and I look at my hands, I'm like, okay, the sweater comes down to here now. That's fine. I'll now bind off. And then the minute I raise my hands, it sort of moves back. Uh, so I don't necessarily get the, 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 the oversized length that I like. I like them when they're sort of down to here. Not this sweater, which I'll get to. But some of these um, big cozy sweaters. If they're oversized and, and uh, big, you know, let them be big. Let the sleeves be longer, etc. But um, this is an easy pattern to make, I think. Um, it's got the raglan increases, something's going on with the cable, and the rest is stockinette. So it's quite a pleasure. And it's knitted on relatively large needles. What was it? Um, five and a half millimeter. And again, you know, all the details are on my Ravelry page. 
it's one of those sweaters that are it's easy to wear um it's comfortable it doesn't scratch um easy to style i've i've worn it a lot with jeans with wide-legged pants with yeah every day uh for you know for for various different um events and it's just it's easy to wear the next thing let me see the next thing oh my gosh the next thing was um definitely the sweater that took me the longest this year but probably also i don't know um the one i'm most proud of this is the snow crocus by midori hiroshi and i love this sweater so much um this is that strange combination of lavender plus apple mint green that turns into a smoky blue with a slight lavender undertone this i bought the yarn back in february of last year so almost a year ago or january even and i began it then had a complete sort of meltdown because the pattern was tricky and then when i picked it back up it was like right here we go you know sort of tunnel zoom vision and um and it worked you've got to be disciplined but it's the payoff is uh proportionate to the to the difficulty i find and um it's a great fit i have made a number of modifications which i talk about in that video i think some of them are on ravelry um but by this time i'd knitted so many sweaters that i knew what i liked what fit looks best on me what i prefer so i again here i feel this is that sort of um it's cozy but it's classy and it's it's got a sort of meticulousness about it that i really love it's got all sorts of different and intricate details and i'm so thrilled to have knitted a, a pattern by midori hiroshi definitely not the last she's got so many beautiful patterns it's just one of those things where i have to sort of <clears throat> really you know uh be ready for it because if it takes this long again if it's this difficult again um i have to be ready for it probably it'll be easier next time i suspect um this was also when i realized that purple was perhaps no longer banned from my closet because it seems to suit me i guess i just don't i have nothing in purple in my closet but it was after this that i realized hey maybe i could actually make the ego sweater in uh lavender um something for another video but you may have already seen it in a previous video i'm working on that now anyway i've worn this a lot uh, but it's also warm so i can't wear it everywhere um, i love the funnel neck by the way it's one of the things i love about this pattern and it's also one of those it's a funnel neck that stands out a little so you know even though this is a little scratchy i suspect it's the uh the silk mohair that's scratchy i can wear it it's like every time I can wear something without itching everywhere, it's a it's a small victory. Uh, it's the Merino Light and Silk Mohair from Mominoki Yarn, which is, I think, a Japanese brand, but based in Germany. Um, and I really, I, they have some lovely colors and they have kits as well. And uh, they have some other yarns that I think I'd like to try out. So this is def definitely one of the highlights of my knitting year, I have to say. And also of my knitting journey, I felt that I sort of step up, stepped up in the knitting game after having uh, finished that. Okay, so the next thing I made, I think I actually made this probably alongside it or bef before or something, was this little snood by Eri Shimizu called the Bunrin Snood, which is made in different uh, scraps from other projects. Here's a uh, wool folk uh, yarn far. This is Eco Baby uh by isaia and this is uh north by tendequant here in denmark so it's um it's one of those projects that you can easily just uh you know find whatever you have um and it was a nice sort of uh whatchamacallit um trying out different lace patterns so if you're new to lace and you'd like to try it out this is uh, maybe a good idea if i were to make it again i would probably make it shorter because um, 
it's a little droopy when I style it like this and it doesn't sit up close to my neck so it doesn't warm my neck all that much um, but I did use it I think in September when it wasn't all that cold uh, it was a sort of stylish cozy cute little little snood but if it's colder of course it's it's too light and too loose so it's for the in-between seasons I guess uh, but it was a pleasure knitting one of Irishmisa's patterns. She's got a lot of beautiful ones that I'd like to try out. But then there's so many patterns I'd like to try out. Okay, so next up was my uh, beloved experimental knit. Um, knitted from uh, the yarn that Sherry from Bainbridge Island gifted to me, which was so um, generous and kind. So thank you again, Sherry. And this was a complete joy. Also uh, a challenge because uh, needless to say, the pattern, well, maybe it isn't needless to say, but the pattern is not written for this type of yarn. This is, I think, bulky weight yarn. Uh, it's the Lamb and Kid Big Birdie. It's super, super soft. Uh, and I enjoyed transferring... Um, the yarn to this pattern. I did have a bit of help from a couple of other people on Ravelry, which was where I'd first seen that it was possible to make it. I, I've, oh yeah, it's the Soldatna by Caitlin Hunter. And I'd long wanted to knit one of her patterns. She's got a lot of beautiful color work, color work patterns, especially also non-color work, but she, I think she's known for her color work patterns. Um, and I, I really like the Soldatna. This obviously looks very different from uh, the some of the other Soldatnas. But as I said, I have seen other people make it. So it wasn't completely unheard of making it in this yarn. But one thing that's a little tricky here is that this yarn is very warm. But it's got short sleeves. So I have to consider when can I wear this. So I've worn it a couple of times with something long sleeved underneath. Which would probably be my preferred way of wearing it since... If I wear it without something underneath, it has to be relatively warm, but then this is going to feel likewise warm. So yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how to style that. I did find a t-shirt that has a sort of a neckline that fits perfectly underneath a short sleeve, sleeve t-shirt. And I've worn it and of course gotten quite a few compliments on it, as you might imagine. So this was um, kind of a departure for me when it comes to colors, although I'd already... Uh, begun it here with uh coincidentally another american pattern that was andre mary this caitlin hunter and um caitlin hunter doesn't usually make uh her patterns in in neon colors and very bright colors so i was all the more gratified when i this just yeah when she wrote gorgeous to me on instagram that was just i, I was really happy about that it was kind of like she was pleased with my attempt i i was appreciative of that um and i've also seen her since make a pattern with some really sort of colors that are like flames up here so she does do it i really loved um knitting this with pops of color on a neutral grayish background and i have to say um big birdie is just scrumptious it's outrageous it's so soft um yeah, so anybody who lives close to or on Bainbridge Island, I'm deeply envious. Um, so I suspect I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this. Also, maybe for a special occasion, since it is a little, uh, it's not your sort of basic look. And I like a combination of basic knits and some not so basic knits. So very happy about that. The next knit, the next knit I made was blouse number one by My Favorite Things Knitwear, which is uh, a basic pattern, I guess you could call it. Basic long sleeve t-shirt with a boat neck and uh, sleeves that flare a little. I made them flare a little extra and just rolled hem, rolled uh, sleeves. It's just bound off with contiguous sleeves, which was the first time I tried that really nice construction it fits well i think obviously this is not how i would style this at all it's just for you to see the fit 
and I have a long sleeve t-shirt underneath this, which I wouldn't do either. The yarn here was really special because it was yarn that I bought in Paris. The, the main yarn, which is Cache Merino uh, by uh, La Bien Aimée. And it's a blend of cashmere, merino and nylon. And it's definitely not the last time I'm going to knit with that because it's super soft. And um, I can manage to wear this with just a tank top underneath. I have paired it with a silk mohair. And interestingly, that silk mohair is also, I think, one of the softest silk mohairs I've tried. It's by Crea Deluxe, a Danish yarn company. And I used uh, a blue silk mohair called Himmelblå, Sky Blue. Um, so you can see the, the fuzz. And um, I wasn't actually into what you might call variegated yarn or speckled yarn until I saw these two skeins of cash merino in the color water lilies in Paris. Then I was like, right, I'm going to make something with that. And I think to me again, I'm into the sort of, yeah, there's an element of fantasy in this. Um, you know, stepping a little outside of what I would normally wear, yet still something that feels within my comfort zone. Hmm. So um, I've worn this quite a lot. It's also what I would call a transitional piece. And I suspect that I'm going to be making more of those. I know I need more of those because those are the ones I tend to wear more uh, because they're not overly hot. But probably a little too cold these days. The next thing I made, did I make that before? I forget. I forget the exact order, but I think I made it after. It's the Weekender with the stripe. <laughs> Gosh, that sparked a lot of comments. I've left it as is. Um, I really like this foggy blue-gray color. Uh, the pattern was easy. It's a comfy knit and I haven't worn it all that much. I'm not sure why. I think one of the reasons is that even though I made some extra rows up here before binding off, it's slightly scratchy. It's a brushed alpaca from Scent Gan. I've knitted a sweater in that before and I have noticed that I don't know if I'm getting more sensitive to some yarns, less to others. No idea what's going on, but it feels just a tiny bit scratchy up here. Only up here, not on the body when I wear it. So I think it's a comfy knit, but I just haven't worn it much. It was easy to knit. It was a pleasure to knit. I made quite a few modifications uh, on this part because of, yeah, the ratio between my shoulder and underarm compared to hers, uh, which I talked about in a previous episode. Um, but yeah, it was okay. You know, I, I might get more wear out of it. Um, let's see if I, if by the end of this year, I don't get a whole lot of wear out of this. I'm tempted to unravel it and see if I can knit something else where it doesn't sit up high or else um, give it to somebody. Let, let's see. Then I began uh, this beautiful thing. So this is the Nola cardigan by Yamagara and I absolutely love it. I made this in uh, a Danish yarn called Snifnuk, which um, I think is kind of, is it bulky? Um, and it's uh, soft. I knew that I could wear Snifnuk because the very first sweater I made in this sort of second uh, part of my knitting journey uh, a little over two years ago. I used um, Sniff Nook in a gray color for uh, the Diamond Jumper by Anna Vinsel, and that has a turtleneck and I can wear that against my skin. So I knew that I was safe with this yarn. And I also wanted something high contrast because I'd seen her wear something when she was still knitting it that had, it was navy blue, I thought it was black, but it was navy blue. And I really liked that high contrast. I've also seen versions of it with low contrast and that looks really beautiful as well. But I had nothing black and white in my wardrobe like this in one garment. And I really, I really enjoyed that. 
So this is Intarja. She's got videos for that. She's got videos for uh, mattress stitches as well, which is how you seam together the sleeves because the sleeves are knitted flat. This was a test knit also, by the way. I was really uh, grateful to be part of that. And she's got two different kind of, kinds of sleeves. You can knit a more sort of regular sleeve that you can make longer, or you can make this uh, wider sleeve. You can also make, make several types of lengths. I made the longest version and it's not all that long. Let me just show you the buttons. The buttons are really simple because I wanted something that wouldn't uh, take away from the sleeves. So you can see here that it's uh, boxy and um, still kind of cropped, but not cropped up to here, which uh, the other version is. So I think this is so beautiful. It's also actually really nice and warm. And um, I think it's nice to wear it with whatever color is the color of your flowers, or in this case it is because it's a, it's a very high contrast look. Uh, what else can I say about it? Yeah, I bound off using an Italian bind off. Not because I had to, it just said bound off, bind off. And I chose the Italian bind off. First I tried the regular bind off and it um, maybe it was because my yarn is off white that it looked a little, um, you saw it from far away kind of, I felt. I wanted something a little more subtle. So I went for the Italian bind off also on the sleeves. So um, this is so beautiful. It's also a little statement-like and I think it's, uh, yeah, um, a really lovely design that I'm very happy with. Maybe I should just add that you begin up here. You begin on, uh, with the neck band on the back and then you you add on to that so that you sort of knit, uh, you know, it broadens in that direction. And then you begin the raglan here uh, while increasing for this sort of V. The pattern uh, takes you step by step through what you need to do. You just have to be vigilant and count, make sure, you know, where are you? Because uh, then you're, you, um, because at some stage you, you alternate between increasing here and here, and you really want to make sure that you're, you're doing the right number. Um, by the time you get to here, it's just cruising. So it's, um, it's not complex. You just have to do what the pattern says and keep track of where you are. But a very, um, satisfying knit i would also say i loved doing the intarsia as i said she's got a video for the intarsia and what i couldn't i couldn't always i mean there are many steps in the intarsia i as i recall from the video and sometimes i did um more of a color work version as long as you don't leave any gaps um and yeah it was nice to uh to do a little bit of intarsia I wouldn't say I've now mastered intarsia. I would say I've tried intarsia and it looks okay here and there. Maybe I feel like I'm stretching my yarn maybe a little, but it's not too bad. It looks, looks okay. I think, um, and it's, this yarn was good for that because, uh, it sort of poofs out and fills in the, the, the spaces. So, um, I felt it's a good yarn to start with if you want to do intarsia. Finally, some accessories. I haven't made a whole lot of accessories this year. Um, yeah, I'm all about the sweaters clearly, but I would like to make more accessories as I've also said before. I made the Gujo collar by Agonit, which is absolutely scrumptious and lovely in this uh, half fisherman's rib with the uh, reversed side out. This is one of those places where Carolina has seen people put the other side out. And if you want the other side out, by all means. But if you don't, remember this is the it's the chunky side that's out. And I, I love the chunky side. It does obviously take a little longer to knit because you knit into uh, every other row or into every row kind of twice. Um, but it's pretty easy and it's a lovely uh, thing to wear over your coats. I've worn it a number of times, but I have to say, since it's a broad, open, loose collar here, I've mainly worn it when I had on a turtleneck or something underneath, because otherwise you're, uh, you know, it's it's no problem if you're just, you know, driving or walking somewhere where you don't have to have 
fabric up to here but if it's if it's very cold i would recommend that you have something underneath um but it's it's squishy it's again it's got that sort of it's cozy and it's to me i think also pretty stylish it's knitted in lang yarn carpe diem in this um i forget what the number of the color is but it's this sort of grayish brown i think i've i hope i've put the right color on Ravelry. If not, <laughs> let me know. But I really, I really love this uh, stitch pattern. Yeah, the uh, half fisherman's rib, and I love it with the um, Italian cast on and bind off. This is actually um, the tubular bind off, where you have the two setup rows. And what I used here was Italian bind off, no setup rows nearing the end here finally um i made the sophie shawl jumping on that bandwagon using uh eco cashmere vintage by gepard gun which was a uh, yarn that i bought on my birthday in copenhagen in the yarn shop ulsted which means the wool place that i can highly recommend you uh swing by if you're ever in copenhagen um but this has been worn quite a lot it goes with all my outerwear and it's uh, soft it's warm it is I wouldn't say it's a shawl she's perhaps got to call it shawl because she first made the little Sophie scarf which is this tiny thing um, it's too narrow I think well maybe it is a shawl it's not all that shawl like in the sense that you wouldn't wear it like that maybe maybe you would but it's not as if I feel I've now accomplished uh, the subtle art of knitting a shawl. But I have, um, I have certainly become more interested in knitting one of those wider shawls. I love this color. I said, oh yeah, I said in that video, I said, you can't go wrong with gray. And if, of course you can go wrong with gray. If you don't like gray, if you don't, you know, there's been a lot about what colors suit suit us and uh, what colors we should choose. And it's interesting because my daughter has blonde hair and blue eyes. Uh, my partner has or had blonde hair, has blue eyes, but their I think their eyes are lighter and I think their skin tone is a little different because he doesn't look good in gray. I look good in gray. I look awful in beige. He looks really good in beige. And I think I think my daughter maybe looks good in both. Not sure. So uh, of course it's it's a question of what you like and what looks good on you. I clearly I look best in cooler colors and uh, at least I think so. Yeah, and uh, usually also muted colors. At least these are the colors that I typically gravitate to. I made one tiny last thing, and that's a headband. And it's this uh, tiny, simple headband called Dreyö headband, I think maybe it's called, by Fiber Tails. It's not wide enough. Probably the reason it's not wide enough is that I only had DPNs in a size four and a half millimeters. I was supposed to use five. Um, but it's, I think it's wide enough if it's not too windy or if it's not too cold and I'm not on my bike. Uh, and also if I make it maybe a little tighter, I think I have to unravel and, and uh, take a little out and make it a little tighter so that it can sort of cinch in against my ears. Drei is an island in Denmark and Drei also means to twist or turn. So I suspect that's why. She actually also lives uh, on this island, not all that far from me. And she's got another headband that I'd like to try uh, with some uh, texture on it that I think is really interesting. But this is also pretty cool and it's a free pattern. Um, that I knitted in uh, Carpe Diem, Carpe Diem Yak, I think. I forget now. A uh, simple sort of TV knitting kind of pattern in brioche. Right, so that was a little overview of what I've knitted this year and um, some conclusions I've drawn from that. Some things I want to knit more of, some things I perhaps should knit less of, fewer of. And um, also, um, clearly the sweaters, the garments are piling up. So I've also thought I should be maybe a little more mindful. It's not that I don't wear them. A few of them I don't wear, but um, 
Somebody asked me uh, in a comment recently, I would like to make sweaters, but I'm a minimalist. What do you do? Ugh. Now that's actually a pretty good question because I'm trying to be more minimalist as well. Um, just perhaps not with my knitting. At least not so far. It's, uh, I think it's a journey, you know, trying to figure out um, where do you want to go with your knitting. Um, but I wouldn't set too harsh boundaries on myself this, since this is, a, um, this is a creative endeavor. You find out things as you go along. And on that note, I saw a, a couple of months ago maybe, um, I think it was the petite knitter on Instagram asked her um, followers what knitting was to them. And then she uh, suggested three words that knitting was to her. And I thought, that's a really good question. I would ask the same of you. And um, I tried to answer it myself with three words. That wasn't possible. So I decided five. <laughs> um, but first of all, knitting to me is explorative. Um, it's about trying new yarns, trying new patterns, um, overcoming obstacles, finding out what do I enjoy, um, where where is my curiosity taking me? And if that's one of your words, if that's one of the things you want to get out of your knitting, um, it kind of goes without saying that sometimes you're going to fail. Sometimes you're not going to make something that works entirely um, because you can't play it safe all the time. And I've also found out that um, if there's this, this is like, a, if you imagine that this is, this is the sort of thing I enjoy knitting the cables, color work, that sort of detail, that sort of detail. This is this is everything that I like to wear. Uh, classy, basic, cozy, oversized, Nordic, Japanese, whatever. There's some overlap, but there isn't a complete overlap. So sometimes I want to knit something that I'm not necessarily going to wear a whole lot. And I think that's also okay. If that's not okay for you, of course, you've got to make sure that you knit things that you know you're going to wear. Uh, if that means more basic things, fine. Um, or if it means you wear more color work, likewise, fine. Whatever works. But for me, it's okay that there are some things I don't wear all that much because I just don't want to have the same knitting experience every time. However, I have noticed that um, apart maybe from this one, and I suspect also that one. I tend to like things that are a little more basic or simple than the things I like to knit. For instance, I love knitting cables, uh, but I felt myself reaching for simple things also. And I also like um, splashes of color, yet I tend to gravitate to gray. You know, so it's interesting. And that's just it's part of the exploration to find out, okay, you know, where's my curiosity leading me? What do I enjoy? So that's one of my words. Um, the other is cozy, and I would like to combine that with uh, a word that is seemingly its opposite, which is elegant. Um, because to me, some of these some of these garments are both elegant and cozy, so they don't have to rule each other out, you know. So I don't want to knit something cozy where it looks as if I've just put on my sweatpants or something. It's not that kind of cozy. Um, I think it's cozy in the sort of the Danish word hygge, I guess, but also there's a certain sense of luxury and calm about it to me. Uh, yeah, since I gave myself permission to choose five words, I think another word is uh, Nordic, clearly, uh, but not only, but Nordic in the sense that um, I have to knit something that I'm going to wear here, something that caters to the weather. But I think there's also um, probably a, a certain aesthetic leaning or preference. Um, now and then I will uh, make a detour somewhere to do something completely different. And I think that's the way I like to go about it, to have a general aesthetic and then take detours. Uh, again, you know, where my curiosity takes me. And then the last word that describes my knitting is slow. <laughs> uh, 
it's slow. I'm not a fast knitter, despite the productivity level that you see here. That's not because I'm a fast knitter. It's because, as I've said before, I've sat many hours on my behind and worked meticulously and slowly. And um, being slow is okay. And even though you may see at some point in a future video, I, I think I've, um, I've taped myself doing some of the cables in one of the sweaters I'm working on because of course I have some works in progress that I also knitted on uh, last year but I haven't finished them so I haven't included them in this video but you will maybe see me knitting on something uh, on some cables in that and it may look fast but it's it's not really fast and I will often spend time yanking stitches along on my cable needle and um, unravel and things like that. And I accept that as part of the process that I'm not a fast knitter. I don't think I'm going to become a fast knitter. Sometimes I may be fast with some of the knit stitches, but with the purl stitches, for sure not. Color work, not. So going back to the first word, explorative, I think that's going to be the, the, the primary word, the most important word in my knitting process to explore to see what's out there to um to see this as a way of sort of developing uh using my creativity the fact that a finished garment comes out of it that i can use afterwards and put in my wardrobe and be proud of that's kind of a bonus but it's not necessarily the first goal of it if that makes sense Anyway, thank you so much for sticking around, for listening to me rambling on about my uh, finished objects here of 2023. I hope you uh, managed to get some knitting done and I hope you are content with what you managed to produce last year. If not, a new year has begun and we can always reset. Uh, even if it's not a new year, tomorrow's a new day. You can always reset, whether it's uh, beginning of January or beginning of a new day. And uh, don't be afraid of so-called failures. Um, try and try and try again. And there's no such thing as perfect. Just do your best, have high standards, and uh, detach from outcome to some extent. I think that's going to be it from me today. Thank you so much. And I will address the wrap-up of the Nordic Knit Along in my next regular video. Um, so stay tuned for that. And I wish you all the best for the new year. And I hope you will maybe explore a little more this year. I hope this year is going to be wonderful for you and um, give you calm if that's what you need. Give you adventure if that's what you need. And if you need knitting company, look no further. You've got it right here. Thank you so much. And I look forward to talking to you again. <laughs>